And we are back for the second if series. Bleed proved that they were mortal as they spilt some pints into the first map of Mirage. It was their home turf, but it was not an oasis for them. It was just that, a Mirage. Now we move into Ancient, and this series might very well be Ancient History, Vince, if Entropic are able to pick up the win right here, right now. We're into the pistol. They're starting off on the T side, and Bleed will be your CTs for this one. They most certainly will. Longs already boosted up as well. I may see some action as Entropic are all pushing through on main side. Favin, Hampus, Longs. You'd think from these positions, they should be good to get the damage done. Favin's also dipping in, although there's some headshots also dished out in return. The flash is good. Forces the teams back into main again. Tail tuck between their legs. But they decide that they don't want to be backed off. They want to live or die on this push, but they also have another flank contingent coming in. Marex has to get some success, won't be happening. And your days are numbered, Oxygen. There is a flanking player behind you in the form of Cypher, and three players up against him, dead ahead. There is no surviving, there are no prisoners taken, as Bleed dish in the damage to pick up the first pistol on map two call that one the pantomime pistol round Vince because he's behind you is the most important piece of the puzzle Cypher strikes with the Julies closes it down and bleed take the first much needed as well it's a good start CT side get a bit of momentum on the go early on ancient don't leave things up to the T's to set the pace of the game now a bit of downtime between the first map so hopefully everyone's reset in terms of how they're feeling Obviously, we're a little bit late into the night now for some of these players. It'll be about 8.40 in England for Cypher towards the CET time zone. You're looking closer towards 10 p.m. Let's see if that starts to affect them a little bit. Bombardment comes out from Entropic. Obviously, with just the Glocks in a situation like this, it's all about jumping for joy. You want to bound out and just leap out through a main. Try and draw the crosshairs off you as much as possible. This time around, doesn't really help. They get mowed down. The eco is turned into a quick one. But any eco that's quick is a good eco. Now we'll see the buyer coming back. Entropic investing into the AKs. Or already donned, Vince. So the choice to pull out the scope from the third round is what Entropic are going for. Yeah, that's quite surprising, isn't it? Especially when you know that... There's likely to be some bonus components in with MP9s in play that want to run and gun and get aggressive. And that's typically where an AWP is going to struggle a little bit more. Natizian is really trying to sell this as being a hit over on the bomb site, Trying to draw as many of these CTs as possible. He's, he's desperate to get a fight. He's like, someone come at me, bro. I want this right now. They line up for him. There's one. Could be more where that came from. And that has sent the fourth player away. Hampus, who was stuck on the site, is now rotating back through CT spawn. And now he's realized it's all a ruse. It's all a trap. They've completely bit down on this. The fact that Tizian has been able to bypass everyone, take control, basically play CT on T into that round, and clamp down on what was an aggressive lane control play. Fight through game, control lane, control the game. Not today, as Tizian, he's just caused turmoil with that maneuver. Gets a backstab, you're all caught in a hizzy, focusing on his play. Meanwhile, the bomb's halfway tick. On the other side of the map, Entropic are all gonna get away with four players staying alive off the back of this one. Only one casualty in Tizian. Meanwhile, for Bleed, they've lost two weapons already. Longs Campus forced to rebuy up into the next. But at least Cypher's got that Kalashnikov. He's got one weapon that he can carry over there. That he couldn't buy for love nor money on the CT side, Vince. But that, that's a shocking round, but that's a little bit worrying in terms of the tempo of the game. Don't want to make that mistake again. Yeah, and it's almost like you said uh, over on Mirage where Tizian was conditioning them through on Palace. I wonder if we're going to see more plays like that where it's conditioning this this idea of like, we might we might rush. This might be the round we rush. You've got to be careful. Throw down some incendiaries. Throw down some utility. I, I'm very curious as to what's going to take shape as this game continues on. But yes, a, a couple of worrying signs. Or if you bleed, you just say, oh, that was a fluke. Let's not get too carried away by this one. Collins going to be coming through that smoke. Cypher. Oh, the spray is labored again. And he gets punished once again. And all the trades going the way of Entropic. Lorks can't get it done either. Tizian just moonwalks his way out in red and paints the, the walls and the floor with the blood of bleed. It's just an absolute catastrophe again. What's going on here? 
Oh, it's mad, isn't it? It absolutely mad. Tizian making it red room for many different reasons in that round. Painting the whole map red with how he's playing it. And bleed rattled already, shaken to the core, hitting rock bottom in record time. They call in the tactical timeout. Got to put them on ice. Got to slow this down and figure out where these problems are coming from. And a big hot zone for it right now is that deep cave slash lane area. When you're pushing out of outside B, trying to fight for control of the map, Tizian just feels like he can do no wrong, Vince. He's able to walk his way in through lane, take whatever fights he wants. If he doesn't clear the angle, Collins is certainly going to. And Cirque just wasn't able to make much of a play. I mean, Favon right now is the top fragger on the server for bleed. He's the one sitting pretty with five frags. Where's the backup? Where's the support? It won't be coming quick into this round as into the fifth. It's just pistols. That's all you've got. And the concerning thing about that stat as well, uh, Jackie, is that four of those five kills for Favon were basically an eco bash round. He got a 4K spray down against basically Glocks. So even in that form, it's like, is, is anyone really showing up? I mean, we've seen again, as you mentioned, there was quite a bit of downtime in between maps, maybe a chance to, to detox and kind of fully reset mentally. Well, we're seeing more of the same of what we spotted on Mirage. Like some opportunities going begging here on the side of Bleed. Tizian in the meanwhile, though, making moves up on ramp, still trying to sell this one, will fall down after the one kill. So that is an AK picked up, at least something for Bleed to work with. To start, you need so much more. Lonks is definitely a good set of hands to have the rifle. He's been stopping and starting a bit into this best of three. Oxygen's got their number if they do walk out towards CT as well. Instead, they're going to set their focus on going towards Donut. Maybe if you play off each other's contacts, you could bait for one another. Send Cypher in as the first peak. Favon could trade in with the Deagle. Might be able to grab a gun, but they're at least focusing on just keeping the players trapped towards the bomb site or forcing them to exit together. That would be down towards Collins. They know that out through A main is relatively safe. Fallon on the drive-by. Hits one, grabs the AK as well, but a little bit too slow on the getaway, Vince. Will be traded, so it's just a single rifle that's stolen for bleed. Yeah, they get a little bit of value out of the round, which at least it's something to play with. But the last rifle round we saw from Bleed was was far from convincing. So they need to turn that one back around on its head. Tizian with some solid entry fragging. Well, that's been a constant thorn and threat over on that ramp side. And he's going to continue to be a nuisance over on this side of the map. Meanwhile, the bomb is traversing its way over into main side. Three players strong on this one, but it has been smoked off. So when Tropic, they're going to have to wait a little bit longer before they decide to pull the plug and pull the trigger on this push. And in actual fact, it's forced the bomb away. Now headed back over on the mid side of the map. So Entropic keeping their options open, drawing quite a bit of utility as well out of the CTs. Keep in mind, there's still a minute 15 left and an incendiary has just been tossed out. There's only two smokes remaining, Jackie. They don't have much to, to cordon off these bottlenecks once these smokes dissipate. Lots of time for Entropic to make the most of it. They're going to be in for a field day, Vince. The gravitational pull of the CTs is keeping them on the B bomb site. Exactly where Entropic want them right now. And they've even begin to rotate again. Hampus luckily turns back around. Favon takes a few bullets, but he will find the frag to shut down. One man trades again as well as Marix. He's murdered and it's all on Tizian, the troublemaker. He's been a bit of a lunatic with his plays up lane, but now he's in a clutch position. AK in the palms, crouching his way up towards the site, cleaves his way through the first. Does he know? Cypher's there, sees the shoulder, delayed reaction, 10 HP, and Cypher withstands the brutality from Tizian. Three rounds of pop, bleed, limp on through that one. They do. Favon, huge impact there from the CT side. But the, the problem here for Bleed is even though they've got the win, they've got the victory, and that's going to feel good, their money is still far from stable. I mean, you're looking at Favon down at, what, $0? Nobody around $1,000 or higher. So Entropic know that Bleed are ripe for the plucking. If they can get success here, 
they have every chance of escalating out of control again. This is a pressure cook around for Bleed. They need consistency. Got to get the wheels turning, man. Something has to change with their plays towards B. Lane control from Sir just hasn't worked. Ooh. This time around, he hits the first mark, but the response is to barrel out and fight for control through middle. Marek's looking for the trades, and the spray transfer is absolutely brilliant. This man's been playing his refrag. No fancy footwork from Favon's Famous as he'll be broken, and Cypher too late on the response. Molotov burns his toes, and we're down to a 2v2. Oh, Tizian's on that long flank. Cypher's made noise. Tizian knows exactly what's coming up. The easiest of kills that Tizian could have asked for. And now Lorx has to spring into action. Activate through Donut. But there is still Milky watching this. He's been playing slowly. Tizian's also wrapping around the back and shuts him down. And Tropic are so fluid, so mobile. But it was all about that Marek stubble. That spray transfer in mid unlocked that area of the map and allowed Entropic to exploit it fully. It was beautiful, man. You can see he's been doing his drills on that one. Knew how to control the recoil really clean with the spray control. and uh, makes a world of difference for them. The response to take away map control from mid when you've lost lane is the perfect answer to what Bleed had thrown at them. Now they group up for a very hefty hit, looking like they know they can beat the timing of the nades because there is none there. There isn't any nades to play with for Bleed. Cash at an all-time low, it's just gonna be a raw sight take. They run on in, flashbangs over the top, AK's doing the talking. Cirque with a USP, he'll be alive for a few seconds before this one should blow up on it. Back turn for Marix, few dinks, he will eventually convert it, looking for a follow-up as well. And the pistol is punishing them, nearly a third. But too little, too late as the Glock stops it. Man, first that crazy P250 kill, he landed on Mirage, and now those two USP kills? Like, damn, maybe maybe Cirk just play with pistols from now on, bro. Like, you got some crazy, crazy aim with them. But we're going to see him don out the AWP and try and rinse and repeat with a far superior weapon. Problem is, though, that Bleed are struggling to contest against Entropic's consistent pressure that's been applied systematically around the map, mainly over on lane on the B side of the map. However, from the likes of Tizian, there has been a hotbed of contestation that's mainly gone the way of Entropic. HE clears the cobwebs for a few moments, allows the Molly to come in and forces Faven away. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so meticulous. Force Faven out of the alcove. Collins goes in for the wide swing. Faven's a goner. Can't do anything about that. How many times have we seen these first picks fall in the lap of Entropic as well? Because that they're so good for them. And the difference of winning those opening duels makes your life so much easier. Scope attached for max precision here. Cirque will strike from the donut and put a hole in someone else for a lot of different reasons. 60 seconds on the clock. Cypher this time nearly turned on. Tizian was suspicious, felt eyes looking down on him from the back and turns, but Cypher still wins on the duel and he's repositioned back into the cubby, tucks in as far as he can. Collins takes the fight to CT, good for one. Timing's there for the swing, the AWP has the upper hand and Bombsite has been taken by Entropic. Look, he's already made moves over on long side as well, or short, pardon me, where Cirque is waiting, a battle of the AWPers. They both have a good idea as to this being a possibility. But we haven't seen one another yet, but it's Milky that comes out ahead. Not for the first time today. Hampers straight into the crosshair of Oxygen. And the woes of Bleed continue. I thought maybe a transfusion was forthcoming at the start of Ancient. As you said, they were hemorrhaging over a Mirage. But it just feels like more of the same. Like, they can't get themselves into this game, man. Like, they win the pistol. Things are looking sharp for them. But as soon as the rifles came out from Entropic, it's an entirely different ball game. Man. It's rough, bub. Hey, it's crazy as well, isn't it? Because with MR12, you kind of get these sort of score lines where we're sat here, Vince, and we're umming and ahhing over just how important it is that Entropic are winning right now in this fashion. When, when it is just three rounds, MR12 just makes the whole pacing of the game in these sort of situations feel so much more influential, especially when you're probably going to be able to convert this now. Get yourself a seven out of it because bleed, you just ain't got anything to work with. Physically down to just the USPs. 
Cypher would have to make some sort of gargantuan hero play, even with the buy up into a light investment, a quasi buy, supporting it with a few sets of Kevlar, double smoke, the Deagles. Where are you going to position yourself? How are you going to play it? Can't play it like a rifle round. Got to try and do something a little bit more unorthodox, maybe fight for control, set up in an off angle you can bait off each other. Cypher's just deep donut. They've lost all their HP already, Vince. The utilities absolutely ruin them. Yeah, and there's not much that Cypher can do once they start to lose players over on the catwalk area because one of the components of taking mid control, if you're on the CT side, is you you have to at least threaten the idea of cave exploding out and pincering the T's. If you lose cave control, it's putting so much more pressure on Red Room and also Donut. And when you only have an M4 to play with and no flashes to kind of burst out with as well, that kind of wrecked Cypher and Favon accordingly. So... A rough one again for Bleed. And Tropic now just dotting their I's, crossing their T's, making sure that all these angles are covered and accounted for. And this will be a plant momentarily over on the B side of the map. They have picked up the bomb from T-Spawn. And Favon is the last ace in the hole. And well, he's been shut down accordingly. Hampus, though, does get one cheeky kill through the smoke before it fully blooms. But Marix is going to go ahead and get the... Mop and bucket out and sweep away what remains of bleed. There's not much that could have been done in that round, but Entropic still getting it done pretty comfortably. And to go back to that question, by the way, Jackie, I'd love to pick your brains on this one a little bit before we get into the action. Uh, what's your take on MR12 overall? Are you happy with it or did you prefer MR15? I think it was one of those where my knee-jerk reaction was that it, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be, you know, what we'd come to love over the past, sort of like, well, 12, 13 years. But after playing it, after going to LAN especially and trying it out myself in a, in a competitive format at UK event, I really fall in love with MR12. I think it suits itself to the quicker pace of CS2. The fact it is a little bit more like Sorsh and swing on each other. The game's a bit quicker in many ways. I think it works, Vince, especially because, you know, these days, uh, TikToks ruins everyone's, everyone's brains, Vince. You can't, you can't focus for more than a few <laughs> seconds, mate. MR12 has made it a bit more digestible for people. So uh, if it's going to get a new generation into Counter-Strike, I'm all there for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying it myself as well. I don't think Bleed are having too much fun right about now, though. And they're being pressured again on B. Two players stacked at the back of the site. One of them has broken off from the pack, and that's Hampus. He goes into Donut again. That catwalk control has been bitterly fought for between these two teams. And let's be honest, it's Entropic that have been dominant in those engagements. Two players in Cave. And now, Entropic are taking some mid-control. Smoking off red. Flash out as well. Affords Tizian safe passage to peek into Donut. And Hampus playing passively. That's all that Bleed can do at this point. Maybe the confidence is completely gone, but Cypher's going to try and regain that. MP9 frag onto Collins. That's a weapon that can be traded up. And Favon has put himself one down as well. 30 seconds left. Bleed in control. A round where they've finally got a big advantage to work with. Circ as well. Circumvents the rotate in through CT. Tizian. He's been a bit of a beast at the best of times. And this is an interesting way to play it. Out onto the bomb site. They're giving him free fights, Vince. 1v1's established. From what was a dominant position for bleed, they're starting to hemorrhage a lot of these players. But it won't matter as Circ rolls back the years. The cannonball decimates Tizian up close with the Bunder Blast Orb. Blowing him away to give them another round in this half. You still need more though, Vince. The journey's nowhere near done. At best, you're looking at a 7-5 split here on their CT side. We really need to see them proving that there's a lot more to give. Lonx has been quiet. For me, that's terrifying. He was such a big staple for this team. He ain't delivering right now. We need to see him back out there, giving it the big one, showing what he can do. I completely agreed, but to see Cirque and those kinds of shots is definitely going to give a shot of confidence if you're his teammates, or if you're a fan of Bleed. And speak of the man, now positioned up close. Plant goes down. Such a fast, rapid take. With smokes and flashes and HEs all being tossed in. The good news for Bleed, though, is that they're pretty, overall, they're pretty healthy. They have tons of smokes at their disposal. They've got flashes as well. And all five players remain. So this retake, certainly possible. 
Oxygen lining up that HE. Little Dizzy knows a player actually behind that smoke in the form of Lonks. That smoke is going to clear, and it will be a gimme. It will be a straightforward frag. Oxygen goes back in for two more, spinning around and taking this round alongside with him. Beautiful hold from Entropic and an 8-4 score on top of it. Mate, that's absolutely ridiculous, Vince. His name's Oxygen because he's got a good set of lungs on him. He blew them all away with that one. Three frags, two of them easy pickings towards CT. The third turns and burns through the smoke, denies Donut control. Unbelievable. Really, really unbelievable. The physical skill ceiling that we've seen from Entropic into these games is that anyone can have a quality round. Anyone can have barrels of impact frags tied to them. And they just pass the baton. They let everyone have a crack at it. And that's a corker of a round there. Winning them the half with four rounds to play with. A big buffer going into your CT side. You've got to completely dominate now. I mean, really, for bleed, what do you do? You've got to come out swinging with a pistol round, or this one could be as good as done. Your chance to make it to the close qualifiers could be closed in a few seconds. Lonks with a P250 does punish, opens it up with the first shot. Collins already making his move down ramp, but this time Favon will clock back. The Glocks are proving strong, Vince. They certainly are. There's something about bleed and pistols, man. Like they even in rounds, you know, in ecos and, and in force by sort of rounds, their pistol work is on point. The problem is when they get the rifles. Milky though is gonna give them at least a small glimmer of hope into this round. They have no kits currently available between the two players, and both do have Kevlar and have taken no damage. So it stands to reason they may think about saving these instead of really going all in on the retake would be a cheaper full investment for that head armor. But Milky is keeping himself close. He wants to try and get some exit frags here. He's going to get caught, though. Sideswiped by Hampus, baited out into the open. And that means that Bleed will at least take the pistol. As you said, this is a big lifeline. But man, they've got to grab onto this lifeline with both hands and make sure that they don't get bullied, they don't get pushed off this again. Because... The bomb plant is going to afford them tons and tons of options. There's not much in terms of Entropic. You're looking at probably no real investment apart from Oxygen. They can't let this slip, Jackie. Like, they, they can't even afford to lose two or three weapons in this round. No, it's got to be spotless. Absolutely spotless, Vince. Everything they make into this round will have reverberations throughout the rest of the game. So, ideally... We want to try and make use of main man Cypher. Send him in as a bit of an entry. He's usually so good with the mat 10 in his hands. Doesn't matter what map it is, D side. He has that smart heads up style of CS where you can kind of throw him in, you'll create a big distraction, draw a lot of attention. Here though, it's the tank being formed. Luckily, only one man will get hit by the artillery shell of Lonks. They wanted to go for the four player boost, even trying to salvage the situation by going for a run boost down ramp. Doesn't work out the way they wanted it to. They feed themselves into Cirque, who takes a big old bite out of them. So a 3-2 split on the kills between Cirque and Lonks, and the round goes their way. Big bit about it though is like you said, didn't do it with casualties. Everyone stayed alive, Vince. Yeah, exactly. Great for confidence, great for the bank balance as well, collectively. And not for the first time, getting some success, calling the tactical timeout. Because they know the importance of this round. You're going to have rifles coming up against you. This is a chance to break Entropic back down into bite-sized chunks. And get yourself right back into this at an even keel 8-8 eight eight scoreline. That is what is tantalizingly dangling just above the head of Bleed. So I want to make sure they're on the same page. Milky's gone in for a glass cannon orb. So no Kevlar, no nades alongside him. And you can understand why. He's had a lot of impact with the orb, but just generally on this map. But the same could be said of Mirage. So he's very much a player that wants to use that wherever possible. Let's see if it ends up being successful. Put all the bells and whistles you need on a map like Ancient as well. Utility to control ramp, control cave, control lane, it's vastly important. If you don't grab control early, you leave everything in the hands of the T's for rotations, for the way that they can approach it. This time around, they go for the deep nades. Molotovs to follow it up. Cyphers walks his way in through middle. Ooh, Collins with a crosshair placement. Tracing on that one and ready to tackle. Takes down Cypher like a trip wire. Meanwhile, Lonks will be knocked off his feet as Tizian comes out on top. 
in the close range encounter, and you're already down to just two men. Cirque and Hampus, both rifles apiece, going in towards the B site. Headshot positioning for Tizian. Hmm. A little bit paranoid about the push out through cave as well, but no one's coming and knocking. Instead, it looks like they want to sell the idea of this being a bit of a playback in B. Try and cut noise, see what they can do with it. Spam in through the wood, Vince, but his dink is a lot heavier. Oh, yes. Uh, Cirque was hoping for a cheeky kill. Instead, loses 50% of his HP, and it's Entropic again, just having that sixth sense. No one went to pop flash and peek, getting the upper hand, creating chances. And Milky's there just to deal the fatal damage to Hampers. Cirque moving in in the cave. MP9 with the spray. He was anticipating that second peek. Never came in, and Entropic... They've traded up multiple weapons. They now have three AK-47s on their CT side with an AWP and an M4. This is about as good as it gets in terms of a lineup on Entropic. And Bleed are going to use their last tactical timeout just to try their damnedest to break these shackles. Try and bring themselves back into the running. A lot of uncharacteristic misses from key names on bleed hasn't looked the same as what we saw earlier in the open qualifier. It feels like something's changed a little bit. Meanwhile, in Tropic, they've looked pretty damn drilled. And some smart heads up maneuvers. And especially now with the funds to back it up, you've got all the utility you want for your CT side. It makes your life so much easier to deny the tease. And that is a commodity that they just don't have. Sprinkled in, there's a few flashbangs, a few smokes, sure. They don't have all the offensive utility that they want. They really have enough smokes to make big plays out of this. If you're going in dry, that's all they can really do. Two players walking up contact, clearing in towards A main. Milky this time just put on a pedestal, playing on top of the box, ready for the first shot, using the shadow advantage to his aid. The follow-up frag comes in from Hampus, but it's all a bait onto Oxygen. You're willing to trade there. You still walk away with a big advantage. You're now in a two versus three. This favors you any day of the week. Yeah, and honestly, Oxygen probably should have done better from that position. You know, he had the drop on the second play. I think he whiffed his spray a little bit. But as you say, the end result is the same. They come out of it with an advantage. Bleed may have some catwalk control, maybe trying to take the, the cave area and make it theirs. But they've already lost so many casualties, and it's allowed Entropic to stack three plays over on this side of the map anyway. So even if they try and explode outside a cave and get onto the site, they're going to have to deal with Tizian, who's already pushed round down on ramp and is about to wrap behind them. Additionally, Collins is there, and they're joined by Marix. So Collins is taking some damage. They now have a good idea as to what's coming up, and this will allow Tizian to make a move in. This is the nuts play. Oh, he sprays down the middle of the two of them, maybe biting off more than he could chew, but that is valuable intel and a lot of damage on top of it. Still heavily in favor of Entropic this round. So much relies on this lurk from Cypher. Oh, his spidey senses are tingling. Flicks round. Nice heads up flashbang over the top for the CTs. Right down the middle. That one won't connect. Giving them room to breathe. Cypher now playing on the off angle. Deep towards back temple. Waits for the fight to come out. But Marix has already worked his way up. Cleaves onto the first. Cirque has been dropped. Flashbang in his hands. Pops that towards Donut to clean across. Cypher falls in a 1v1. All on Lorx. 14 HP. AK to get the job done. He pre-fires Vince. Gives up his position and crumbles because of it. In Tropic. Snatch away the 10th round that looked like it had bleed written all over it. Wow, uh, when Cypher got round the back of them into CT spawn, I honestly thought that the, the entire dynamic shifted from being in favor of Entropic to actually being in favor of Bleed, but it, it just feels like they're a bit flat right now, Jackie. Like, they're, they're not quite playing at that level that we've seen before of these individuals. I'm not talking about as a roster, but as individuals in other teams. Like, Cypher, a bit uncharacteristically desperate with how he was maneuvering around, running in Temple, giving his position away from Marix. They had an idea that someone was there, but it really gave Marix all the info that he needed at that point. It's a, it's a bit of a difficult one to watch right now because Bleed are not living up to what we were expecting from them. And it's not just that they get beat by Entropic, but it's the nature in which they're losing these rounds that's the problem for me. It feels weird. It does really feel weird.
You know, it, it's the same sort of way I've been feeling about this one. It looks more like it's your one-to-one -one CS. The players just not shooting as hard as they normally do. Uh, and that's a weird one for you. Because, you know, it feels like this roster really... I'm, I'm looking at Longs. I'm looking at Cypher to have some big games. They ain't been there. Sir, he, he's been hitting the mark. Weirdly enough, he's been the one that's kind of delivering with a rifle. Uh, and that's not what you'd know him for. That's not what you'd expect him to be coming out with. Bring into the table in a best of three like this. A, a game that is really a stone's throw away from guaranteeing you make it to the closed qualifiers very prestigious part of the CS major cycle. If you can make it to the close qualifiers, who's to say you can't make it all the way to the RMR? And this is looking spooky for him, Vince. The buy is basically just two rifles, a duo of AKs. Everyone else is on the Deagles, a deco to play with. Headshot positions in play. Marix backing off with awkward timing, nearly gets out of there alive. Response from Cirque is to remove the head from Collins, and it's all about the bombardment. Tizian caught focusing between two angles, but still trades. It's just unbelievable. They're winning trades, and they have no right to win at this point. Marix is also is going to put them into an advantage in terms of manpower, even though the post plant has already came in. Going to be trading weapons. Marix on the low HP will be donning the AWP. Oxygen and Milky with the assault rifles. Time is dwindling, though. About half of the fuse remains. And although there's two kits, they have to start making a move here. As Favon goes in for one, they know his position. Tickling the bomb, trying to draw him back out into the open. And Favon snatches the life away. They don't know where Sirk is. He'll show his hand. And it'll be Bleed taking their first round in quite some time. Two rounds back to back, but it'll feel like so much more than that with how things have been going for them. But in doing so, Jackie, they have broken down the CT economy. So now Entropic have to sweat. Now it's their turn to feel this pressure. And that's pressure that's been relieved from Bleed. Reducing the pain. Reducing the worry in some of these rounds. And Cirque and Favon being the two to stand tall right now. To make the difference. Look here with a Deagle. Oh, a couple inches away from beheading Cirque and dropping the Bulgarian beast in minutes towards middle. Instead, he walks away from that one, limping. 14 HP to his name. Minute and 30 on the clock. Gravitation for bleed is towards cave. No real aggressive cave control this time for Entropic. They don't have the nades for it, and they don't want to run the risk of pushing out and getting shot from range. So they're basically giving up all of that map control towards B, towards middle for free. You can clear your angles towards cave, walk your way up through ramp, take the fights towards deep CT, and probably get a free bomb site out of this one. Most likely just being a formality of around traded to bleed now. You certainly think so. I wonder if they overthink it, though. Doesn't look likely. They're going to be throwing in the smokes, the flashes, the HEs, everything being tossed in now. Boarding off all those areas, and this is going to go exactly as you said, Jackie. Post plan into an eighth round, and in Tropic with very little invested into this one. Oxygen has every right to save that Kevlar on the 5-7, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see some of these Deagles take a bit of a punt on a potential kill or two. But the economy of bleed, which is far from being fully established itself. And Sirk watching up towards the middle side. Has to look out for him. Locks in the meanwhile, puts down one body. Should be a second if he's feeling confident enough. But on low HP, he has no idea, of course, that that is the low player himself. Collins does put the P250 to use. And so at least one casualty has gone the way of Entropic. But bleed pick up their eighth. To be up against rifles again here, though. It's not going to get any easier for them. Rounds around, though. And at least they've got that one. At least they've secured it. It's a potential timeline where you lose to what's basically just a minor upgraded pistol eco. Would really do some damage to the confidence. In Tropic, rebuying up. Milky again with the AWP. He's been good. The scope has made a difference for this team when he's allowed to flex himself. Just go for a bit of an aggressive play. Come off the leash a little bit. Launks really trying to take a different pace to this one. We haven't seen too many strikes up ramp where he just swings in on his own. No room for a trade there. No backup, no util. Goes in raw and gets nothing. Shadow advantage for Milky. Bodes well. Strikes onto Cypher. Meanwhile, the middle murderer of Marix will come back in with two. And Collins assists to strike down on Favon. Vince, this round's blown up, and it's not even been 20 seconds. 
Yes, it, just a deflating experience if you bleed, isn't it? You're building your way back in brick by brick, step by step. And within 20, 25 seconds, it's all gone horribly wrong and comes undone. And it's not like one of your save weapons here is one of the AKs. Ah, you got a Mac 10 by the hands of Hampus. Maybe he'll try and rummage away and squeak his way in for a save weapon later on or try and go for a couple of kills here. But then Tropic, they hit double digits first. And they're going to be moving to 11. Just two rounds shy. And keep in mind, if you missed the first map, guys, this is 1-0-2 in Tropic. They beat Bleed on their choice of Mirage. And now they are mere steps away from securing their spot in the closed qualifiers. Just a couple rounds. That's all they need. Been a long day. Starting back about seven hours ago or so. They've been fighting their way through these open qualifier games. We started back in the round of 64. Campus, can he hold on to the orc? They're pushing in. Dying after time here would be a very horrific feat. Not a position that you want to be left in. The no-scope makes the difference. Try to save with a masterclass. But in the last few seconds, falls. And that hurts. That's painful. The difference of carrying the AWP over versus only having about 1.6k in the back pocket. Oh, it's rough. Oh man, that was some beautiful shots as well, but it's not going to feel good for Hampus. Because as you mentioned, he's just been financially ruined. Puts him down into just a deagle alongside Cypher on the Tech 9. Still a way back in for bleed here, Jackie, but I'm just lacking a bit of confidence right now from what I'm seeing. You know, like, it's not filling me with confidence at all of what I'm witnessing here, and Tropic are bullying bleed. I'm not giving them a chance to breathe, and speaking of which, tizzy straight down on the ramp. We saw him do this a lot on the T side. Now on the CT side, he's just as aggressive. Some speculative shots, but no kills behind it. But he has got the intel that multiple players were seen down at the double doors. thing is, depending on how Bleed play this, there is a timeline where this could be a round for them. I mean, free rifles is enough if you're able to hit those entries on B. And the one big point about that is that you don't have any more nades. There's nothing left for Entropic. Once this smoke's gone, about 20 seconds time from now, you've got 30 seconds left on the clock there, and then it's only three flashbangs. That's all they've got. No offensive utility. They can't molly you. They can't nade you. They can't even smoke on the retake to block off angles. So as long as you can hit your shots on entry, trade for each other, and get the bomb down, it's a round that could still be picked up. We're looking close for the smoke to dissipate. Problem is, out in the open, Favon, he's a freebie. He's out on an island on his own. Nothing that could be done. You smoke off the angle, sure, but you've got to hit those shots. Push comes on in. They're being bitten by the bullets. Longs will find the headshot onto Tizian. Milky's still just peppering in warning shots. And the retake's right here. Oxygen in the back as well. Sees the head of Cirque. They know exactly where these T's are. Oh, he decides to back away, though. He's going to try and bolster up or at least draw away some fire and allow the rest of his team to make a move in. He's moved on to Catwalk. He's being a real pain in the ass right now for Bleed, but the time is ticking away ever so quickly. And there's very much a lack of grenades. No incendiaries, no HEs, and they're going to call the, 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 the uh, save here. That is very difficult if you're in Tropic to call that save, but they've decided we've got four players. We've got no incendiaries, no HEs to barrage this one back in for a potential retake. Even with kits, they didn't feel confident enough. It's a difficult call, but it allows them a really healthy buy into the next round again. Bleed, get it done. That's why it was actually quite a nice read from them because, you know, you saw the aggressive control of ramp being taken by Tizian, uh, but they gave it back up. They just hoped that the smoke wall would be enough, obviously getting that in at the last second. But timing wise, 30 seconds, still a ton of time, Vince. It's more than enough time, especially if you've got a free entry path through caves to support your ramp players as well. And they make it work. In the end, it goes their way. Not having the nades makes the world of difference. You see T-side Ancients, they don't gamble on the retake. They instead opt to keep their weapons, because obviously being one round away from a match point, you feel willing to trade a few of those rounds. You can give one or two up to bleed. Throw them there and see what they do with them. For you, you're trying to back for yourself. Root for Entropic rather than playing the long con here for bleed. 
In terms of their positioning this time, not too much offensive utility again. We're seeing no HEs, no Molotovs, Vince. There is more smokes in play, four of them to be precise. So at least you've got that element. But for Bleed, this means they can hang around. Yeah, they can sit there and take control of Cave, take control of Lane for once. And that will they will most certainly do, but they've lost the first player again. Lonks is on the chopping block. And although they have a lack of grenades, getting those picks and hitting and running, that makes a big difference. Nice little boost up from Collins. He can keep an eye on Ramp whilst his Tizian watches his back through on Cave. Allows them to be a bit more passive on their approach. The smoke comes down, though. Staying in position. And Hampus on the other side of that smoke. Now the grenade's being tossed in from the T's. It stands to reason for Entropic that this is going to be the B-side hit. And so they're going to draw away a couple players. That boost is going to yield them a kill. A cheeky kill at that, but Collins will get nullified through the wooden panels. Tizzy now in all sorts of trouble. Needs to get downed as fast as possible, and Favon will stop the smoke pushing Marix. Ten seconds left, but enough time for the plant. No, he's come off the plant. Has to go back on it again. Does have the time, however. Not going to get punished for that one. And Milky decides that he's going to go ahead and try and push forward, but the timing works against him. And Bleed looking good for double digits. Unless Oxygen can snuff out two more players. They know exactly where he is. They have good post-plant positions. Oxygen doesn't have a kit and no grenades. So surely he's going to have to back off here and try and save. Bleed will get up to 10. And now they're breathing down the necks of Entropic and making a real go of this game. I knew the AWP was CT, but it's not worth the risk of taking that fight towards Oxygen and losing your guns. They have to give it to him. So the one freebie he gets at the end is that he's allowed to scavenge that scope and bring it into the next round. For Bleed, honestly, count your blessings that Cirque was there, Vince. He's kind of made the difference in a big few of these clutch rounds. And that's another one. The instant reaction. Figured out instantly where the barrage of bullets was coming from off the back of the boosted angle in Cave. Hits the first shot. Plays around with a bomb as well to get it down and goes on to maul the player towards CT and actually keep them in the game here. 11 to 10. Bleed. Are they going to be able to tie up this scoreline? This is a big gamble. Bleed have made a lot of investments into these plays on the B site and it's conditioned in Tropic to actually commit to a full stack off the back of Milky's Orb. If we're all here, we play together. They run into us, we win the round. They don't run into us, we try and retake. You can save the Orb, we'll make the best out of it if we want to. It's a 50-50 gamble and that's what they opt to go for. And this will be a, a post plant that will yield them the round. All five players have very little to save, other than some Kevlar here and there. Scattered across Oxygen and Milky with the AWP, of course. So just bodyguard that AWP. See if you can maybe take down an exit frag or two and convert that into a couple of AKs. Ampus actually gets the man he wasn't aiming at initially. And Milky will punish him. So they go... Jump in, pick up the AK-47, yoink that one across and run away. And I think Tizian may get the luxury of saving onto this one. Favon goes down. More than enough money, of course, for the rest of this half, as there's only two more rounds coming up. But Entropic steal the AKs away. That's a great take out of the round. About as good as they could have hoped for. They've slowly been grinding this game back. That's three rounds on the spin. At least being able to make things a bit better. Okay. All tied up then. Bleed. The comeback's begun. But can they take us to a third map? Can they keep us in it? Or will this fairy tale, a bit of a nightmare ending, will Cinderella get the slipper back into this 23rd so far? Seems like a slower play. Bleed, obviously, using a lot of that investment. Brute forcing B time and time again. Always fighting for control. Ooh, peek out with the orb. And that's through Cave as well. So a complete change of pace in the way that Milky's playing this one. He goes for the peek down through lane. Tries to find the fight through Cave. I didn't spot anything for his trouble. So Lonks is able to stay alive. Bullets being peppered out from Oxygen as well through the smoke. And they're all grouping up. They're right there on the precipice of making a play in through Donut onto the A site. 
Oh, Tizian's timing. Spray, line up. M4A1 ass goes to work with Marks and Oxygen. The death chamber. And that shirt comes out, but Milky's there with the AWP. And Lorks, who's had a rough day at the office, will not have any further part in this round. It's match point, qualification point to the close qualifiers for Entropic. And Bleed have low money on multiple players. Scary prospect to be looking at here. Overtime or bust. That's what you got, Bleed. We've been watching. Let's see what you deliver. Early nades coming out. Back to basics. They go to the B bombardment, but this time the utility's there. Entropic didn't have the funds, didn't have the paper to buy up the offensive utility. This time they do. They bombard their way down with the nades. A lot of damage done to open things up. Cirque scoped in. Looking to punish, looking for a trade here. Tizian waiting on the close angle. Three players grouped up on a bomb site. Oh, if he can bypass them here, side swipe them with the M4, it could all go wrong. Favon tried his luck. The barrel gives the game away. Hampus trades. Zerk hits the shot. Marix wants to murder them. Maul's the first. Sees him in the smoke as well. He knows where he's gone and he turns to fight the cave player. Cypher's been shut down and Entropic will close it. 13 to 11. They walk away with a game.